Shadows of Forbidden Gods. Um, it's a strategy game, um, and if you aren't familiar with the premise of the game, you're basically, if I remember this right, you're playing as some sealed away <laughs> dark god, um, and you're sending out your agents into the world to basically crit. Basically, you're setting up the apocalypse, um, and so this deals with, again, unit management and resource management and sending things out on your behalf, so you're kind of acting from the shadows, if you will. This game is very, very similar to a game that would have come out several years ago called Bat Witch Sleeps. Unfortunately for all of us who backed that game <clears throat> in Kickstarter, um, the creator never saw it through. You know, you, there was a bunch of art, a bunch of cool ideas, it was a really cool premise, um, and you can even look it up, That Which Sleeps. You'll find some videos on YouTube, um, and the later ones show how nice it would have looked. So, very similar premise. Unfortunately, that game never came to fruition. So, fortunately, someone else had a similar idea and ran with it, and so at least we're not totally bereft of our Dark God game simulator. So, we're going to start this off. I've never played this before, so we're going to start with the tutorial. Usually I have a love-hate relationship with the tutorial, but I feel like with this game we're going to need it. Okay, cool. So here we get to choose um, the deity we... But yeah, and uh, each one probably has different um, strengths and abilities. This game is an early access, so maybe this is the only one we can uh, select at this time. So since we don't seem to have any other options, we'll go with this one. Okay, so we have our, this is us, we have our uh, cool little agent chilling out here, and I think we want to send him, whoa, that, that is really fast. Um, we're going to send him down here, I think. Hover over to view more details and click to begin a task. These are the currently active effects. So it seems like as we uh, go down, we'll unlock different things based on what's going on. This kind of tells us what's happening. Let's just send our... Here, I wonder if we can... wonder what this location has in it. Huh, what if we can create? Not yet. Let's just send him down here. Okay, it's of just a valley. That's why there's nothing going on there. It's Maybe your that was all our movement points. Okay, so we'll end our turn. Okay. I feel like we want our dude to go undercover and kind of manipulate things, so... Let's... Our intrigue's actually pretty high. It doesn't actually say what these skills do. Let's see if we there's a tooltip. No, not yet. Okay, I'm gonna go with Intrigue. It'll allow us to manipulate the city from the shadows once we get there.
maybe I don't know if what you guys prefer. So if you have any requests, let me know in the chat. But for me, I kind of just like to read this silently. If you want, I can read it out loud for those of you that um, prefer kind of like audiobooks or things like that to actually reading. So just let me know if you have any preferences in the future. Okay, so it looks like in order to infiltrate, we have to undermine it through its neighbors. Um, so we can go to the adjacent sediments instead um, because the security is too high in the city. So we can see it by selecting the city. Security value will be visible in the middle of the location screen. Okay. So maybe instead of here, we can go here. Yeah, there we go. Looks like so there's a fortress and a farming community. I wonder if there's anything else that's available. And then here, so we have a raise army option there, but not there. So this one might be better to infiltrate. Even though that's a fortress, we could turn the local community against one of these other locations. So, okay, moves are there we go. Now, we might be able to start doing some interesting things. Okay, so let's infiltrate this location. Unfortunately, we actually do have a plus four intrigue. And it'll take four turns. Let's do that. So it shows our progress right here for infiltrating the city. And we'll end our turn right there. I'm not sure if there's really anything we can do in the meantime. I think that shows what they can do. Or what we can do if we had control of the city. It doesn't look like we can do anything yet, so we need to wait. It looks like um, there's a countdown, too. And again, this is early access, and this is the tutorial, so... Okay, one more turn left. Okay, now we've infiltrated the city. Or farming community, in this case. like the picture. Now, can we do anything? Interesting. So, like, his hit points actually went up, so he must have leveled up a bit. Okay, so if we go here, we can actually see the different values. No, this is kind of slow, but we're just kind of exploring how this game works. We haven't played it before, and again, this is the tutorial, so if you want to play this game, this might be a useful kind of uh, playthrough for you. So, combat ability, knowledge of mysteries and arcane, and oh, no, it also increases casting speed. Okay. This is the one I'm focusing on with this character because it'll allow us to manipulate more of the world. Like, magic is awesome. But, if we can... It's it's kind of like a, if you've ever played uh, Mafia. You know, it's way easier to win as the Mafia if you turn the townspeople against each other. Um, and you kind of stay in the background. So that's the approach we're taking with at least this particular character.
And this is, um, you know, so determines our cap for unit command and the ability to command others. So pretty straightforward. This one, though, has a lot but more behind it, you know, since it also goes into casting, etc. Okay, and this is our home. They gain shadow from resting and healing in an enshadowed location. So in shadowing their home city will slowly corrupt them over time. Interesting. Do we have that option? It starts a well of shadows, which spreads shadows to all neighboring human city elements with a lower shadow. Acquires a location with shadow and a well of shadows modifier lower than... Okay. So let's see what our options are right now. Showing challenges available to your agents in this location. Local actions. Can we? Let's click on our little agent, have him rest and resupply, and we'll end the turn. Okay, and now it looks like he leveled up, so we get a new, uh, ooh, we can increase this by two. I don't know, that seems really powerful. I, again, I don't know what I'm doing, but let's just pretend we do. Next one, after Intrigue, I'm going to go Lore, so maybe we can do a little more of this kind of thing. Stat, Lore plus two. It doesn't say, it doesn't look like we have um, any reason to not do something like that in the future. So, but again, we're focusing on intrigue right now. Kind of want to build up our power behind the scenes. We'll rest. Okay. And I'm kind of curious how... If we, what actions we'll have next. We already infiltrated the city. Okay, nice. Here, now we have a little more information. So it shows the population, food, security, defense, prosperity, ability. So this is Prince, the ruler. Again, I'm just seeing if we get any new options here doesn't seem like we can do anything else right here um, and again maybe I'm missing out on something really obvious objective infiltrate surrounding settlements okay so I think our next job is to infiltrate this city so we've already done that we're gonna go on to the next city okay and then there's our infiltrate and it actually shows what modifier affects this so when we back here when I hovered over the stat you know this shows what's affecting this action so in this case, we have a very high Intrigue stat, so we're going to, again, infiltrate it. It shows their current progress, so we'll end our turn. There we go. And notice how fast that went. That went a lot faster since we had a higher Intrigue stat. Anyway, we got some cultists going on our side. Nice. That's actually really cool. <laughs> I'm liking a flavor text. Okay, so by doing that, we've reduced the uh, security in the city. You know, I'm going to read this out. Infiltrating the surrounding settlements has reduced the security in the city somewhat, as well as reducing the security for the second infiltrated location. To further decrease security and learn about interaction between settlements, go read the farming village in the south. Once you do, you'll be able to see a devastation modifier. Select the location and then the modifiers tab on the right hand side. This reduces the food produced by the city. The city has a population higher than its food produced, so it must import from the village. Click to see the views of the numbers. If the village cannot feed the city, a hunger modifier will appear in the city and the food statistic will go red. This hunger will then cause an unrest modifier in the time, which will then start to decrease security. So again, sounds like we're destabilizing region. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let me see. Do we have another option here? 
<laughs> That's awesome. Raid Periphery. That's awesome. Raid Farming Village twice. We don't want to raid the Citadel. We want to raid the Farming Village. Okay, so we have something here, and it, the reason I'm a little more familiar is because of that one game, <laughs> which would have been super cool, um, had something similar. Um, the more actions you take, the more um, people start to become aware that something's up, and you want to keep your profile down. So you want to try to kind of balance how many things you're doing because if you do too many things like hey let me burn this city down and there's monsters everywhere people are gonna know hey maybe there's someone pulling the strings behind the scene maybe something's going up and then they'll investigate you and uh, that can be really bad so sometimes this game can focus on balance but in this case we're just going all out we're gonna raid this little farm and create unrest in the city because you know they're not getting their food Interestingly enough, this is affected by might. Our might stat sucks. <laughs> but it is what it is. Let's find out. Okay, now notice that... So I, fi I figured it out. So the progress bar, our stats affect how long it takes. So like if our might was 10, this would be done one turn. But since we have like no might, it's going to take us 10 turns to do this. Um... Just the game auto saving. Not a lot going on until we are able to do this. Okay, so we've rated it. Now we're going to rate it again because we wanted to rate it twice. Interestingly enough, we have a world panic here, and then our victory condition. So we have to get three points to win. You win a victory by conquest when you either in shadow or destroy a sufficient proportion of the initial human settlements. These two objectives combined can destroy some human nations and then shadow others to decrease the number of cities which need in shadow met. Achieve this goal before you reach the turn limit before the heroes can defeat you and you will win at the game. Now I'm willing to bet that the victory conditions will be different depending on which deity you pick. And again, you know, if this guy's sealed away, if we break these seals, we'll gain new abilities and this guy will become stronger and stronger. Nice, the turns are quick. Oh, something just happened there? No. <laughs> okay, nice. Now that we are done setting up, we can move on to infiltrating the city itself. Each point of interest in the city must be infiltrated separately. And a city palace can only be infiltrated when all other points of interest interest are infiltrated so in other words in this kind of place you have to infiltrate every level before you can go deep into the government you can begin already I'll take advantage of hunger when it builds up without needing to wait now it's kind of interesting we can see like a little vines on the places we've kind of been affecting for our infiltration so there is like a little indicator in the UI <laughs> so we're going to start infiltrating different levels of society. Okay, and this even says just what I said. Da, 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 da. It's visible by dark tundrals on the map screen. And... Um, Again, they're commenting that this is a simplified version because this is a tutorial. So let's start with the library. We'll get smart. 
Whoa, look at that. <laughs> it's good that we have a pretty high inf intrigue stat because that would take forever. Without that. Bam. In the silence between the books, figures move with purpose. The librarians were always treading a dangerous path. The books held on their libraries, giving them tantalizing hints at a far greater understanding of the cosmos, giving rise to a craving for insights the human mind should never glimpse. Awesome. Now we're going to infiltrate the market, and then that should unlock the palace. So again, good we focused on the intrigue stat for this character. The unrest modifier of the city is increased to the point where it's affecting security as the citizens ride over food shortages. The guards are stretched thin trying to keep the peace, leaving you free to act. See security by selecting a city. Security value will be visible in the middle of the location screen. And the details for the causes of security increase or decrease can be viewed by hovering over this value. Okay, so in the middle of the location screen, so let's click on the location. Here we go. This just shows food. Where is defense? I know they just literally said it. <laughs> it can be found in the middle of the location screen if you hover over it. Security, here we go represents the difficulty to operate a covert manner in this location. Security will increase the turns required to perform most intrigue challenges here. So as we lower this value through unrest, it makes our job a lot easier and faster. Infiltrated challenge is at least 50, plus 50 complexity from security. This location is being affected by base, capital. And then here we have those negative modifiers, negative four unrest, minus one infiltration and the citadel minus one real filtration and the village and then we have four guards so this shows us the total the big picture of how we came to this number so right now it's a lot lower because we have all the surrounding cities um, are infiltrated there's and there's unrest and that gives us negative six as opposed to what it would normally be which would be uh, let's see at least eight <laughs> So we took that down from a value of 8 to 2, I'm guessing, if I understood that correctly. Okay, so now we go back, we're going to infiltrate the market, which we're already doing. Ooh, look at how the city is changing too. And notice that that went down from a much higher number to a much lower number because of all those com things combined. New stalls are found in the market, selling products of no known origin, spices with flavors unheard of by even the most traveled gems shining with a brilliance which seems to come from the sun or on it, which seems not to come from the sun or any candle. Books containing stories which could not possibly have occurred yet seem unshakably familiar. I love the Lovecraftian vibe that they put into this. So already, I think the potential for this game is really cool like i don't know this is my cup of tea um and if they're able to kind of flesh this out i think this will be a really awesome game okay so let's see what we can do now here we, now we can finally infiltrate the palace it's nice that we have that giant objective <laughs> at the top okay because, uh, and let's take a look at the city. Security's still low. It shows the food supply. What's going on with that village? Has a security of zero. Came. Okay. I'm wondering if since we've been focusing on intrigue so much, 
we should start doing some other things, maybe like lore or command, because we're probably going to start branching out into other domains. Oops, I didn't realize I already started. Okay. Now even the palace itself is under the influence of the cult. Cooks, valets, guards, squires, pages, all slowly join the cult, ready to serve, to disrupt, to open gates when asked, to look the other way when acts are being performed. The aristocrats th may think little of these people, but they depend on them for their very survival. Our cultists are now present in every part of the city and can begin a great work. To win the game, humanity must be thoroughly brought to heal. One way of doing this is to spread sufficient shadow across the world that humanity's very essence is destroyed and they slip into apathy and sin, their souls rotting from within. <laughs> shadow spreads across the land slowly, starting at various focal points of dark energy. An infiltrated city can be made into such a focal point by enshadowing it via a challenge. Perform this challenge with your agent. And now, it, so it took us all that time to be able to get this far, so now we can actually start. You know, I haven't been paying attention, but our profile and menace has to be super high. So menace increases the motivation of heroes to attack your agents. As you commit crimes, you gain menace, and heroes can detect them. So this is why I was talking about earlier, but this is explaining it much better than I could have. And more likely to attack as your menace increases. And agents, menace cannot drop below a minimum value, which grows as their menace grows. This agent currently has a minimum of 25. Profile. Profile represents how visible a character is. The higher the profile, the easier it is for other characters to detect and intercept them. Every 10 profile points allows you to be detected one step further away. An agent's profile cannot drop below a minimum value, which grows as their profile grows. This agent currently has a minimum of 5 or 10, sorry. Um, so profile is how visible we are to other heroes and agents in the game. Menace is the motivation for them to find us. So right now we've been doing a lot of crap. And because of that, our menace is super high. And we're pretty visible. Not horribly so, but this, the more we do, depending on what we're doing, it'll increase. Like, for example, it is possible to do a lot of things but have a very low profile. So your menace is high, so they have a lot of motivation. But maybe because you've been acting very discreetly, your profile can be very low. So there are ways to kind of manipulate that within the game. And you kind of use a strategy to, you know, how do I want to do this? Okay, it's good we just upgrade our lore. Bonus intrigue, bonus lore. Bam. The darkness swirls out of the shadows, swallowing up houses, streets, cities, and provinces. Candles and bonfires seem as distant as the stars at night and cast as much light. As your agents perform challenges, they will gain menace and profile. I just literally talked about this, which will cause heroes to try to stop you as they discover. The air agents are in league with the dark powers. Each agent's menace and profile are separate values, so one agent may be suspicious while another may appear innocent to heroes. Profile represents from how far away a hero can detect your agent, while menace indicates how strongly they consider them a threat. Although humans exposed to shadow will slowly become enshadowed, themselves and become blind to the menace posed by agents, armies, or dark nations. You can see a hero's motivation and anticipated next moves by selecting them and hovering over the relevant tasks. Your agents will die at this point. Your agent will die at this point, but the great design is larger than any one agent, and new agents will rise to take the place of their fallen comrade to continue your tasks. <laughs> Dang it. Sir Shavilla. Whoa, how do you say that? Regnell has taken note of the supplicant, and due to their high menace, they will try to stop them before they can doom the world. So now, um, we uh, have this guy trying to go after our guy. Fortunately for us, 
he's a ways away, but it's going to be problematic because this is a really small map because it's a tutorial, so it's not like he's going to have that much trouble figuring out where we are, especially with our... <laughs> oh my gosh. A profile of 100 freaking 35. That's ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Now, let's see what other actions we have now that we've done all these things. Do we have any powers available? Can we create a new agent? Observe and combat the hero. Unfortunately, because we did not go a might build, I don't know if our uh, dude is going to be able to do all that much. King Saint Boar has completely following to the shadow. Is there in shadow meant reaches a hundred? So that was the ruler of the city. They will now no longer respond to threats based on their menace and will reject calls to join the alliance. So the alliance, I'm guessing, is probably when multiple nations join together to go against you. So if you can manipulate people, you can prevent them from joining forces against you. If they are a hero, you may now corrupt them to turn them into an agent under your control if you have recruitment points and a space in the roster. So let's see, can we recruit the king? What can we do with him? Click ruler portrait. Okay. Level zero. So that shows that he's sort of on our side or at least corrupted. I don't know if we have any uh, available options, though. I'm not sure how we get the Create Agent option. Unfortunately, if we go here, he's going to be able to see us. He probably already sees us. Maybe. Let's see, what can we do here? I don't think we have a lot of options right now. The supplicant pun completes rest. Okay. So we, we are well rested. And now we have this dude trying to attack us. So we can attack him. And we can disrupt him. I'm trying to figure out how this works. Let's see, do we have an... Okay. Oh, unfortunately, looks like he has a little friend to help him out. We don't have anyone. So it looks like our defense is static, so once it goes, it's gone. If we flee, we lose everyone. I don't think we can really do anything, unfortunately. I don't know how. <laughs> so, yeah, it looks like we did get in one attack. Um, but because they were both going, you know, they got four damage in, so two, two, and then we got one attack off, and then they killed us. So, yeah. <laughs> Supplicant was defeated by Ser. Shvila Yregnel. And it falls lifeless to the ground. The great design carries not for pawns. So, object... Okay, we've already... Okay, so this is our threat. I 
I don't know how we use our recruit. Okay, agent recruitment. You can only recruit agents if you have a free slot available and have at least one recruitment point available. You gain recruitment points over time at a rate of one every 45 turns. So we have recruitment points. Can we create an agent? I mean, maybe this guy might get corrupted over time um, because he is in this region that's all corrupted with shadows. Um, I don't see any options for actions we can do, though, right now. Okay, let's, let's end the turn. If your agent's dead, it's time to recruit another. Okay. You know, and some of this, too, is since it is the tutorial, you know, these options might just crop up as scripted events. In other words, like, we might have had the option to recruit earlier in the game, in a full game, but since this is a tutorial, you know, it's trying to guide us through all these different things, like how do you do this, how do you do that. So this is a slower version of the game, I imagine. If your agent dead, it is time to recruit another to take their place. Down at the bottom left, the Create Agent button can be used to bring up a list of options. Three types of agent recruitment exist. Unique agents may only be summoned once, and once they are gone forever, <laughs> usually, each of them has unique benefits abilities in a different strategic role. Generic agents represent classes of agents and make, and many can exist at any one time, each being a different person in the same role, such as Orc Warlord. Corrupted heroes are heroes who have reached 100% enshadowment and can be taken over. This is powerful as it denies your enemy access to this useful hero, but they start with high profile in most cases and the hero is already well known. Okay, recruit a new agent. So it doesn't seem like there's any big threats, events. Okay, nice. So we can actually go through here and see what's going on. So worldwide panic. Oh, interesting. It actually has other effects too. Higher panic results uh, and more action being taken against you. Although, we are a little one step closer to victory because of, uh, you know, corrupting this region. Okay, nice. So now we finally have one agent available to be recruited, the Cursed. Cursed for sins of others, the Cursed has been exiled from human culture and seeing how hollow and cruel their claims of justice and fairness are. She serves out of bitterness and desire for revenge against those who wronged her. Her gaze can cripple a hero, weakening their combat abilities and making them easy prey. She may lack the potent magical powers of some agents, but can be useful for harassing heroes by attacking to interrupt them, then escaping unharmed. Can be placed anywhere. Well, maybe we could just start here. Why not? Okay, whoa, everything's super balanced with that. Select a new trait for the cursed. Petrifying gaze. So it looks like we only have one out. Mere sight of this agent's face is enough to stiffen the body, weakening the hero's combat abilities. On combat, start inflicts the paralyzed trait on the opponent hero. Well, that's really nice. I like that little icon art for her avatar. You know, maybe we could build a combat role for her. Can we infiltrate? So maybe we need to start here to actually infiltrate. Our visibility, our profile is like nothing because we haven't done anything. So that's really nice. And our turn. Your new agent is the cursed, a starting hero designed to harass enemy heroes. She has a unique trait, Paralyzing Gaze, which reduces enemy attack and defense. This allows you to attack heroes to interrupt their activities while taking reduced damage or to assassinate key enemy targets by degrading their combat performance. To strike her trait, she will benefit from support. Now that the city is infiltrated, we can loot the vault, taking gold from the ruler and give it to our agent. Do this by moving the agent to the city and performing the challenge, access vault. Okay, so maybe we started off in the wrong place. And because we have no profile, 
And the reason we have no profile or mess is because we literally haven't done anyone. We're just some random person, you know? So, can't we access the ball right now? I'm just curious, can we do this right now? Oops. <laughs> well, maybe that won't work. So uh, that might have been a little bit of a waste. We have to probably go here, which makes a lot more sense. You know, we haven't infiltrated or done anything. So and turn. Okay, now we can do it. Okay, take all. There we go. Curse completes access. Okay, go to. Nice. Oh, and because we have money, we can recruit someone. Okay, recruits a minimum type of self horn at the cost of 15 gold. If you have more minions command cost total than your agent's command stat. Minions will need to be dismissed. The challenge can be formed by them. Okay, so nice. One turn. To so scold your agent now recruits a minion to assist them in combat in the same city. Perform the recruit cell sword at least once. I'd like uh, one more. I think we have, what, enough, right? Okay. Good. The minion attacks. Minions attack alongside their agent or hero leader, taking their turn after their leader and the opposite leader both have, and can block damage if they are opposing the damage sources. It's to say if they are in the same row as the minion or leader who is attacking. Empty rows are therefore best avoided, as minions in the opposing team's row could attack your agents without being blocked. Attack the enemy hero with your agent by moving to their location and pressing the attack button in the right hand side. Be aware of it. Direct combat with heroes is often unwise, and your agents may wish to rely on stealth and caution instead of direct combat. Many heroes will populate the world, and their deaths will not go unnoticed. Okay. So, we should have... And this is our command limit based on our command. We're going to do one more. Nice. Now we have two minions. And our profile's gone up because, uh... It's still not bad, but it's because we, uh, raided that vault. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little cache... ...up here. Oh, we want more in our little deal. Okay, so now if something happens to us, we can just go back to pick it up. If we had a higher um, command, we could get more people, but unfortunately we don't. Now what's this dude up to? Like, how strong is he? He has, actually has decent hit points. Rest and supply. I don't know, um, do we need to rest and supply? Could try it. Okay. Now, we're gonna attack. Unfortunately, we haven't leveled up by doing anything, but, uh, there we go. Nice. And we don't really have, you know, there's not double stacks, so we can go ahead. And nice, we have, uh, we do have that special ability, so I'm curious to see how it will uh, play out in this. So all of our dudes just killed off that guy. And we even got in a little bit of damage 
like a little bit of a defense well down too. Oh, he retreats. Okay, and now because we won, we have different options. Okay, so we have different options. We can try to get them um, to hate us. We can try to get them um, to be more reckless. Or we can try to get them to be more afraid of us and avoid combat. I think it'd be nice to have him more reckless because he doesn't have anything right now. And Arsar, if I'm not mistaken, everyone's at full health. I don't think we actually need to rest up. And now we can attack him. And everything's at full, and he still hasn't had time to recover. It's nice that it has a run-by-run -run play of what's going on. And the reason he- one reason he's not attacked is one, we have a bunch of damage incoming, and two, we have that special ability. Nice! Curse is defeated and killed Sir Shavilla. You rang now. News of this victory will stir your enemies into action and draw attention to the curse for better or for worse. So now uh, her profile and menace have gone up, especially her profile. Now this will, I guess this gives us two different options. So let's see what they are. Agent will proceed on, but the heroes of this world will take note of their fallen comrade in arms. So that's if we just leave the body. This increases our profile by quite a bit more though. Let's see. Gives high menace and profile, making your agent a focal point for the attention of the heroes and gives the trait infamous. When agents with their infamous with the infamous are killed, they can be blamed for the actions of other agents you control, which have less than half their profile and menace, and as much redu as such reduce these agents' menace and profiles as the heroes of the world believe they have killed the most dangerous enemy, and that the danger is now past. Glorying in victory before therefore allows you to choose an agent to sacrifice in order to help the others keep a low profile. Gain inf you know, actually with her, she's kind of like an agent killer almost. And so with that high, you know, with that special ability she has, she's really good for taking down enemy heroes. So actually having her be, giving her a higher profile is advantageous to us because it draws their attention towards the person that's well, best suited. And if we are able to recruit more, yeah, they can operate in the background. Take all. I guess there's uh, nothing to take. <laughs> Now, let's see if we can do anything by going here. I mean, what? I don't see any other heroes. Well, the main game... Well, in the main game, many heroes will oppose you, and new ones rise up to take their place. This tutorial world is now at your mercy. Shadow can be spread from high shadow areas to low shadow ones by using Wells of Shadow, which, if cast on a higher, a high shadow area, will spread it to adjacent neighborhoods. Perform this challenge and spread shadow until you reach the victory condition. Spreading shadow is one way to win the game, although complete destruction of human settlements also contributes to your victory score. So assets such as orcs allow you to employ entirely different strategies if you so choose. Well, let's... Okay... I'm not sure how we can spread, uh, requires a location with shadow. Let's go over here. I mean, I thought we already... Okay, so maybe we... And okay, we enshadowed it, but we didn't make a well of shadows. Starts a well of shadow at this location, which spreads shadows to all neighboring human settlements. So this is kind of like getting our foot in the door. Um, and it blinds people to what we're doing. 
this is actually sp creates like a place where or a focal point where it can spread from. So let's do that. And even set this very helpfully objective spread shadow via well of shadow until victory. The darkness flows across the land like a malign lake, drowning the world in its eerie gloom, blotting out the sun and driving your people slowly into oblivion, their minds collapsing and souls putrefying. You know, it's just like McDonald's. <laughs> okay, so now if we click on here, I'm wondering... Okay, and Shadowment's full. These are the actions available at this location. I'm kind of curious if it shows... Okay, it shows some different modifiers. We have high unrest. Famine. <laughs> and a well of shadows. So we can actually see the different modifiers going on. Let's make another well of shadows. Why not? Because it's already spread some shadows to surrounding areas, so that's why we can start to spread more when we didn't have that option earlier. Ooh, pretty. Look at that. We're just going to keep doing this. Baroness Kant Boar is falling to the shadow, and how now past the halfway point? Reaching 50% enchantment, this will reduce their motivation to perform various actions which harm your interests, such as attacking your heroes, warding against shadow, driving back shadow, or ordering the, the destruction of high menace locations. Same thing. Yay! Okay, and that is the um, tutorial for the game. I'm going to take a very short break. And next one we're going to do, we're going to start a new game without the tutorial and see how this plays. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you very, very soon.